national championship is on the line tonight inside Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth, Texas. The path to Paris revs up with the Olympic trials just a few weeks away. This is a major step towards trying to make that Olympic team. Terry Gannon, Sam Peshek, and the crew. We get underway here. Night two scores from night one carry over. It is Simone Biles who leads the way. The seven-time Olympic medalist, six-time world all-around champ, looking for her ninth U.S. all-around title. A few moments ago, she opened up the first rotation on balance beat. Extraordinary night one for the eight-time U.S. champ. Wow. Crooked right away, but pulls it back on. After day one, she was first on this event. And everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to get there, Terry. <laughs> really powerful and dynamic and brings that to this event especially. Gearing up for three flips right in a row. Handspring layout, layout. Boom. The judges really look for calm and clean landings, and Simone does a really good job of making her skills so quick to that finish position and moves on, so the judges don't even have time to possibly see a mistake. She had that little misstep right at the beginning, but the rest of the routine was pretty solid. Two years away from competition after the experience in Tokyo at the Olympics, which was disappointing yet inspirational in many ways and all the speculation on whether or not she would return try to make it to Paris for the Olympics again we saw her at an event a few weeks ago night one and now to open up night two and just sensational stuff yeah this is in my eyes what really makes Simone great moments like this where she's off it's clearly a mistake look at her heel so far off the beam doesn't even react to that, just stays calm, puts her foot on the beam, and is able to not only break the connection, but finish perfectly solid and straight on the beam. Check that out. Would that have thrown off a lot of gymnasts? Yeah, I mean, the beam's only four inches wide, so for her to make those quick adjustments is what makes her phenomenal on this event. Here's the back handspring, back handspring, full in. This is actually an area where she has more in the tank. They are using her difficulty sparingly, so coaches say we're hoping to see it in the meets to come. Jonathan Owens, defensive back for the Bears and her husband, high fives all around, and she's got family here watching. She's got friends here watching in Texas, and there's the number 14.8 for balance beam. And I'm calling her consistent because that's the exact score she got on night one. Night one to night two. She leads the way along with the best in America here in Fort Worth. NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2024 Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Always special, the national championships in an Olympic year, and they are once again. Terry Gannon Sam Peshek, part of that Olympic silver medal team in 2008. John Roethlisberger, a four-time U.S. all-around champ, three-time Olympian, is with us, or Stevenson as well, as we are under night. So once again, the scores do carry over from the opening night. Suni Lee, the reigning Olympic all-around champ in fourth place going into night two, and she opened up a moment ago on vault. Everything right now critical for Suni coming back from two different types of kidney disease. She said she's in remission, still getting treatment though, and going step by step to get back to that form that she was in in Tokyo. And this is one of the events that she doesn't quite have the numbers. Supposed to do your Tenko double full. Ooh. Doesn't make it. So obviously disappointing start. Yeah. With the all-around champ, John. Yeah, I talked to her coach right there, Jess Graba, after that vault, and I said, what happened? He said he thought he saw her trip a little on the run. Look really close. There's only a very subtle, look at her feet right there, a little hitch in her run. Was that enough to throw her off? The plan, as Sam said, was to do a double twist. She audibled, only did the one and a half. Unfortunately, came up 
short. But again, the bottom line is that doesn't really affect her selection for the Olympic team. This is a depth move fault for her, where she shines is bars and balance beam. Yeah, but she's working and using these pressure situations to build confidence, and that does not help her case. Yeah, she's trying to go step by step, trying to get the stamina back, the endurance, and the confidence yeah. at this point, and that doesn't help. All right, how about Kayla DiCello, the 20-year-old from Boyd's, Maryland, in third after the opening night, started on floor exercise. He was an alternate in Tokyo at the Olympics, a star at Florida, now trying to go to Paris. She started this year on such a high at the Winter Cup competition and really, unfortunately, had a lot of mistakes at Classics. Came back strong on day one. Her coach, Kelly Hill, said she said it was wake-up calls. Her coach thought it was alarm bells. She got back into the gym, and that's why she saw so much success on day one here at Championships. She's second on this event after day one, and I think it was just slightly better here tonight. What stands out about Kayla's gymnastics is her execution. You look, see it right there, 8.25. That's out of a 10.0. Eventually, five gymnasts will make up the Olympic team in Paris, and certainly if you assume uh, Simone Biles is going to be there. There are so many different names in the mix right now for that team, including Jordan Childs, who was there the last time around in seventh place after the opening night, and she opened up on balance beam here. Big part of that team silver medal stepping in when Simone Biles stepped aside in the team event. Yeah, she said people call her the consistency queen, so she wants to prove that here. She had this look in her eye on day one, Terry, that was out to mean business. Says she's at her best when she's angry and always brings the energy. She does. And there's nothing better than working being angry. Ooh. Oh, man. Completely off on that last layout step out. Yeah, she looks a little rattled. Easier said than done, but the goal of balance beam is when you do have a mistake, really put it behind you in order to not make that one mistake turn into two. And it's hard too, beam is such a mental event that if you're off, even in the warmups, it can sometimes get in your head. Tough to start on beam? Or, or it's just up to the individual? I think it's up to the individual. An athlete like Jordan Child, she comes into meets very amped up. So it could be harder for her since beam is an event that you like to settle down and be calm on. That's a great way to end a routine with the suck landing. Tough start, good ending for the 23-year-old from Vancouver, Washington. Yeah, she struggled in podium training on this series as well. You can see she's already shifted to the right side of the beam. She has a few opportunities to pull it back on, and I actually think if she got her back heel down, she could have saved that. It looks like to me that she reacted a little too quickly from that correction. Got to be an awful feeling yeah, in that position. Yeah, oh, it's the worst. 
So 12 3. Mistake on B for Jordan Childs. How about Sky Blakely, the 19 year old from Frisco, Texas? Did anyone else besides Simone Biles do more on night one to move toward that Olympic team than she did? All I can say is I think she gained a lot of fans just from two nights ago on night one here. She has that out of bounds, one tenth. You saw the yellow flag go up for her heel going over the line. The goal she wrote in her notes app was a 56 in the all around, and she actually got a 57 on the first day of competition. So that really tops it. But this event is actually an area of improvement for her. She had a three tenths out of bounds on night one. So it's all up to this last pass. Of course, she already has the one tenth. Nicely done. So she'll improve just two tens for the out of bounds, Terry. She was in the mix the last time around and then had the injured elbow at the Olympic trials, which took her out. And she said, I, I kind of shut down after that. It was devastating to me. Worked with a sports psychologist since then to come back. Obviously awfully confident coming into the week. 13.75 the number. Jade Carey, the Olympic floor gold medalist eighth place after night one and she gets things underway or did a moment ago on uneven bars. The goal for her on this event is to be calm and confident. It's been an event where she's improved. She's added a lot of difficulty, some new combinations. Really nice distance away from the bar there on the catch. Light leg separation, but overall good execution I'm seeing in this routine. Bam! Yeah, that's yeah. going to make her feel confident. Oh, yeah. It's her dad, Brian, her elite coach. She just finished her junior year at Oregon State. Back to the elite level now to try to go to Paris. 13-6-5. One of the stars last time around at the Olympics. Another name in the mix. Fifth place after the opening night, Leanne Wong, 20 years of age from Overland Park, Kansas, started on uneven bars. Yeah, she's currently fifth in the all around after night one. Ooh, good save. Her coach, Jenny Rowland, said that she was really proud of herself, that she competed in a calm way, and she was happy about it. Nice full twisting pack salto down to the low bar. <laughs> Her rhythm looks a little rushed. Having to make some quick adjustments on the top of the handstand, but keeps it together. And Leanne Wong, you just always know what you're going to get with her. That really helps her when the selection committee goes to decide teams. Alternate last time around for the Olympics, part of three straight world championship teams, though. 13 5 5. And you see the standings upper left hand corner. It is Simone Biles up there. Night one, night two. She heads the floor, which is always a treat. Next. for Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships. It's brought to you by Core Hydration. Whatever wellness journey you're on, you have to start somewhere. Start at the core. By Nike. Introducing the Nike Air Max DN featuring dynamic air. The next generation of air technology is here. Air Max DN. Feel the unreal. By Prevagen. And by Xfinity. 
Stream sports from the best seats in the house with Xfinity because it's only live once. Famous podium images throughout the years, 2021, that lead up to the Olympics. We're there again, looking towards Paris this time around. How about Simone Biles? Led after night one and now extends the lead. Kayla DiCello, Sky Blakely sharing second place, and Simone heads to floor exercise next. It is rotation two of four on the evening. Sky Blakely, the 19 year old from Frisco, Texas. A moment ago, a very important vault. She was sensational on night one. This vault is something she's been wanting to add to the competition floor for quite some time. It was so good on night one. She has got to repeat that. This is called a Chung Vault. Again, nicely done. When her feet hit the ground, you want to see her chest vertical. All right, we'll get that number in a moment. Yeah, I've been talking about that vault for quite some time, and she did it on night one. But Suni Lee getting set. On uneven bars, another key routine, especially coming off of what we saw in vault. Yeah, this is really important. I think more important for her mentally to brush off what happened on vault and to do a good bar routine here. It's a more simplified bar routine. What's really special about SUNY on this event is that she connects most of her elements which is so difficult to do and adds a lot of combination bonus to her routine. So no problem. We talk about angry gymnastics. She looks like she saluted and had an angry bar routine, and I mean that in the best way. She motivated was after the motivated ball, Motivated right? is yeah. probably a better way of saying it, but her handstands were sharp, and it was a really smooth routine for her. Congratulations from Simone there. A high five. Hugs all around. Suni e. Lee coming back on uneven bars with a strong effort. This is the last part of her bar routine. Finishing those pirouettes. Want to see that in a vertical position. Tuck full in. Her eyes are looking at the ground. But she's all smiles to hit that bar routine. Standing out from Simone for the 21-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota. And we're headed to Minneapolis in a few weeks for the Olympic trials. Overnight star as she stepped in, stepped up, won the gold medal in the all around. Right now, let's go over, check in with Zora Stevenson. Jordan Childs is up next on floor, which means it's time for all of us to get into formation. Childs has a Beyonce inspired floor routine featuring five different songs, two different leotards. On night one, it was all about the colors. Tonight, it's all about the bling. Both are influenced by a Beyonce-inspired outfit that she saw when Beyonce was on tour. Childs came up with the idea for all of this and wants to show people different parts of herself on that mat. She told us Beyonce's Renaissance tour and documentary really resonated with her. She can relate to Beyonce's story of still ha having energy no matter what life throws your way. And just like Beyonce, Childs sees herself as an artist and wants the crowd to be wowed by her creations. Always interesting out here. Thanks, Zora. And, and down to the nails she pointed out for us. <laughs> yeah, her nails, of course, they're matching as well. And she's going to want to redeem herself here with this floor team, and she absolutely can do that. <laughs> it's show-stopping, one of my favorites to watch. The judges are looking for artistry. And you're going to notice throughout this routine, she brings the crowd in. She actually says it helps calm her nerves to do that. The harder you dance, the more tiring a floor routine is. So on night one, she struggled on this last pass coming up. 
This is where she's gonna want to put it to her feet. That was perfect. Like that, you mean? Yeah, exactly like that. Yeah, coming back strong. Parents in the house here, Timothy and Gina. Jordan Childs is that girl. It's not just them with the t-shirts. I've seen a number of those around here. Yeah, she's embracing that mindset of being that girl, and it's helped her embrace this year. <laughs> That's how I feel watching Jordan's routine, I got to say. It is hard to watch as a parent, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. Look at, look at him. <laughs> they look out of breath. Worn out at this point. Childs, who went after the Olympics to UCLA, starred for the Bruins. We've gotten used to some great floor exercise routines from UCLA. Yeah, definitely. And she actually took what she learned at UCLA and brought that to this elite floor. Not sure if she's going to head back there to Westwood or not. 14-4 on vault for Sky Blakely. Suni Lee, 14-5 on even bars. So the 8-7 execution for Suni. That's a really high execution. Highest in the competition so far here on day two. Jade Carey over on balance beam. Opens with front aerial to split jump. She told me that if she can do that front skill really nicely, it gets her in a rhythm, and she knows it's going to be a good routine. So good omen, if you will. See, she moved her way up to fifth after that opening rotation. Started the night in eighth. Oh, that was a really strange fall. What's going on with Bean tonight? Uh, man, she didn't push hard enough out of that bottom leg to get the height she normally gets on that skill. Man, she's an athlete that's really icy. She's been thrown into a lot of pressure situations on balance beam this year with her college team, Oregon State. And she actually said that helped her a lot with the nerves. But it's really hard to simulate. Look at the crowd in the back. It's hard to simulate this environment in the gym. Think about that experience, too. It goes a long way having accomplished great things at an Olympics, but there are so many talent. Her mom and her grandmother here watching, Jade. Um, there's so many great gymnasts here at the American National Championships. It is really tough to make that team. Not to mention, it's an Olympic year. They know every moment they compete counts. So we're seeing the skill that she struggled on. This is called a switch side to a straddle jump. She didn't get that arm all the way in, and you could see her heels on the beam, her toes, and really there was just no possible way to save that. Bummer. Kept competing at Oregon State. So we see more and more of that now. The Olympics, the elite going to college, and then coming back to the elite and trying to make it to the Olympics. But it's not like she took a year off from Oregon State, kept competing. Childs with a 14-1, the number for floor exercise. Yeah, huge improvement from night one. All right, Kayla DiCello. You, you really like what you're seeing from Kayla DiCello. This yeah. is a moment ago now on vault. She looks so good on night one, and specifically this vault was a highlight for me. You're going to see Yurchenko double full. Not as much difficulty as Sky Blakely, but she does this so well. Her chest is vertical when she lands. She stuck it cold on night one, but that was almost just as good. Star at the University of Florida did take the season off to come back and talk to her coach, Kelly Hill, into making a comeback to lead this path to Paris. All right, a, a new name for some people, Hesley Rivera. She is the U.S. junior all-around champ from last year, just 15 years of age from New Jersey on ball. And she's sitting in sixth place after day one. So definitely a hot shot to look out for. She does really clean gymnastics. Yurchenko double full. She had a lot of power distance from the table. I just want to see her chest more vertical on the landing. 
Family moved to Texas to train in 2021 for her training at least. 13-9-5 the number and Jade Carey 12-3 after the fall off of Beam. Yeah, disappointing for her. So if you are Leanne Wong, for example, in fourth place after that opening rotation, you watching others and what they've done? I mean, it, it can be contagious on me. It can be contagious. And you want to hope a veteran like Leanne Wong is not letting that affect her. And something that Leanne does really well is stay in her own bubble and her arm positions on this event. You can think of your arms like the steering wheel. If both of your arms are to the right side, like we're seeing right there, your body is drifting to the right. So it's important that your arms are equal distance on each side of the beam. Something's going on over there on the beam because we're seeing some uncharacteristic wobbles. And it could just be the nerves. Man. Wow. Continues. Looks like it is contagious tonight. This is odd. I mean, even with Simone Biles to start, she saved it. Yeah. But that, that open to that routine she had. Jade's fall and this fall from Leanne, those look like nervous mistakes to me. Sometimes on beam, if you're feeling the nerves, you don't attack the beam as aggressively as you want to, and that's when mistakes come. That top three, upper left-hand corner. And remember, Simone Biles is yet to go here in the second rotation on floor. I was going to say that this was an opportunity for Leanne to really jump up in the all-around standings. Mm. Man, just, just off is what it seems like to me. Third in the all-around last year at the U.S. Championships and a four-time world medalist, including a silver in the all-around back in 2021. Tough routine. Now look at her arms. Usually she's so good about putting them in the right positions. See, they're even there. That's great. But now you're going to see that right arm circle around, and then her whole body is drifting to the right. That's what creates wobbles. You see it one more time again. She's trying to finesse it. It does still look beautiful, even when Leanne wobbles <laughs> on beam. But unfortunately, the judges are going to take a deduction for that. Yeah, the fall did take place, though, obviously. So we'll get her score in a moment. We wait on Simone Biles for exercises. Sky Blakely has that 85.2 on top at the moment here. Night two, Fort Worth. Don't forget to get social with the hashtag Xfinity Champs and follow XfinityChampionships.com for more information. Night two continues. We send it over to Zora with a special guest. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, I'm here with Shylise Jones. Shylise unable to compete this weekend because of a shoulder injury. So first and foremost, how's it feeling? Um, you know, there's been a little bit of progress for today. You know, I woke up and I was like, it's feeling a little bit better than this whole week. It's been a little bit stiff, but some progression today. And even with the pause this weekend, what are your goals for the rest of the summer? Yes, absolutely. Of course, you know, make the Paris team, of course. You know, it would be my birthday celebrating it there. So hopefully, you know, we have the whole Paris vibe. A lot to look forward to. You've been out here supporting everyone. What can you take away from being a spectator that you may use the next time you're on the map? Yes, absolutely. I feel like it's a definitely a different vibe. It's different pressure. I'm like nervous. I feel like the coach out here. I'm like, oh my God, I just want everyone to hit. And you know, athletes are killing it out here. But you know, I just take it in. I appreciate how much, you know, sometimes you look at things on the outside, rest things up, and then, you know, hopefully, you know, trials and from there on. So the next time your coach gets on you, you'll understand where she's coming from? Yes, absolutely. I'm shaking for like literally everyone. And I'm like, I know they got it, but still the nerves definitely are still there. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Dora, thanks. So she's out this week, petition USA Gymnastics for a spot at the Olympic trail. She's going to get it. I just clue you in. I would have to imagine. <laughs> yeah. She did everything she could possibly do for that spot. All around medals at the last two world championships. So the 11-7, the low numbers on balance beam continue. That's for Leanne Wong. 
Jocelyn Marmerson in 10th, trying to make a move on night two, not where she wanted to be after night one. He's really come on in the last couple of years. Last year, a breakthrough season, seventh in the all around. And this is one of her strongest events. Behind Simone Biles, she has the most amount of difficulty in this competition here. Double, double laid out. She tore 75% of her left ankle deltoid while warming up at World Championships. So her progress for this year was a little slower than she wanted. She said Simone Biles was actually a really good support system that she was able to lean on in training. Yeah, trains with Simone. Laurent Cecile Landy, 18-year-old from Texarkana, Texas. Typically when you're coming back from an injury, it's the toughest to get your endurance back on this event, but she looks so strong tonight. Part of that breakthrough year was just making the world championship team. Pretty impressive. Last year, what we saw her do, Laurent Landy with the hug, Jocelyn Robertson. 13th after night one, so has already moved up a bit in the top 10 right now. We'll get that score in a moment. Right now, over to John. Yeah, guys, a big part of this process is putting together an Olympic team. And what the selection committee is going to look at is trying to get three great routines on each of the four events for the women. Try to maximize the strengths, minimize having any major weaknesses. The reason is in the team finals at the Olympic Games, each team will put up three gymnasts on each event. All three of those scores must count. So let's put a hypothetical team together on what it might look like. We're going to make some assumptions. If Simone Biles and Shailise Jones continue to do the gymnastics they've done over the much of the last year, they're going to be on that team. So let's just slot them in to two of those three spots on each of the events. That leaves one spot on each event for the selection committee to fill. In the past, they've often put a great floor and vaulter on their world teams and Olympic teams. Who would fit that bill? Jade Carey and Jocelyn Robertson are very similar gymnasts, outstanding on vault and floor. So for them to make an Olympic team, it's almost like they have to beat each other more than anything else. But this is how it gets so complicated. Sky Blakely actually just did a better vault here at the US Championships than either Jade or Jocelyn have done. What could that mean? That could mean the selection committee looks at it and goes, you know what, we don't need a floor and vaulter. We got Sky Blakely. We can look at another event, and here's the vault right here, the Chung Vault. Not quite as good as night one, but still outstanding. The selection committee could look and say, hey, we don't necessarily need a Jade or Jocelyn. We could shift to another event and focus maybe on a bar routine like, you know who, Suni Lee. That is the complicated puzzle that this selection committee has to put together. Every decision has a ripple effect, and that Chung Vault by Sky Blakely has a tidal wave. Yeah, and John, remember there are five team members this time around. They had four last time around, so it is a puzzle. You're trying to fit the pieces together. Chelsea Mimmel on your left, Alicia Sacramoni on your right. They were actually on my Olympic team in 2008, and I was talking to Chelsea Mimmel, who was not part of the selection committee, and her and I were joking about how we're so happy we're not making that decision. <laughs> she did say, obviously, having a chung vault would help, so we'll see. Even 14 for Jocelyn Robertson as we take you over to floor exercise and the 16-year-old from Pleasanton, California, Tiana Sumitasekara in ninth after the opening night and now seventh after the opening rotation tonight. And she's tied on third for this event. She's added so much difficulty here, but she's also beautiful to watch, so she tends to have a high execution score because a landing's like that.
beautiful landings on our tumbling passes. And of course, the judges are judging the artistry by a lot of things, but eye contact, elongation, extension through your fingers, those are just some of the things they're looking for. Said she heard this music about seven years ago. It wasn't the right time. Now is the right time to use it. And to do that right there, choreograph this routine herself. Beautifully done. So you think about this Olympic cycle, but the next one too. Think ahead to LA and maybe a 16-year-old at the moment, Tiana Sumanasekara, who could play a large role then. So much potential. You see the big skills she can do, but she also does them very clean. So that's why she tends to score really high. And I think it's an athlete that we're going to continue to be on this positive trend and continue to do better. So, Simona Sekera, and then the last one to go on floor in this rotation, Simone Biles. In first all the way through as we check out the Prevagen memorable moment, Sam. Yeah, we all know that she does huge, difficult gymnastics, but this is one of the most impressive things to me. Triple, double, this was at Classics, but she did have a huge step back. So it's memorable two nights ago that she was able to do it and stay inbound. She's basically just walking into it. And then this here is a veteran moment. Check it out. Right there. Her heels are not over the line, so she saved herself three-tenths of a deduction. Not really like she needed it. Kind of like a Chicago Bears defensive back on an interception along the sideline. Yeah, exactly Keeping like that. Yeah, She's an yeah. uh, expert level here. Prevagen, memorable moment. and But the, the, there is Jonathan Owens, her Speaking husband. Speaking of football. Watching, yeah. Um, but that first part, too, walking into it, slowing it down so that you don't have too much power going out of bounds. Most gymnasts attempting that skill would have to have a lot of power from the run, not Simone. She actually tries to dial it back, and her coach says walking into it makes it better. Hey, one other thing, guys, to just give you some perspective on how good Simone is on this event. Her potential score, her maximum score, should she be perfect, is a 17. If you look at the World Championships, all top eight teams from the World Championships, there's only two gymnasts that had a higher potential score than a 15-7. It's wow. insane. So our parents, Ron and Nelly, watching too. They're in attendance tonight. Here we go. like she had that out of bounds on the first class. But stays in on her second pass. I mean, most people are trying to put their tumbling passes to her feet. She's just trying to stay in bounds. perfect as she could do it and she looks like she's having a lot of fun mom loves it i love that no matter how many times her parents have watched her do amazing on the competition floor they still get this excited and this nervous at times too you can kind of tell ah But her coach, Cecile Landy, said it's not even her skills that stand out, but it's her attitude and her behavior. She truly thinks that she's happy here and having so much fun. And I can see that, too. This is the triple-double. Two flips, three twists. 
Look how high she gets. Uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it really is. But still working on staying in bounds. Another look. I'm wondering if they're going to give her one tenth or three tenths for those feet. But can't do it much better than this. Good body position. She knows exactly where she is. Clean landing and celebrates the end. She celebrates. The whole family celebrates in the stands. Still emotionally touched by what she's watching out there on floor from Simone and her husband with the high fives too. Hey, this sport is an emotional roller coaster. Oh yeah. It's an individual sport too. You're supported by your family, but you're out there all by yourself. I'm telling you, like you yeah. don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't pass the ball when you're feeling <laughs> right, exactly. down. Trapped in the corner, you got no teammates to pass it to. It's a great point you made, though, too. She's just trying to stay in bounds. She knows she's going to land it. Yeah, she's she doesn't even need it. Try not to have too much power. 15-1, the number. Simone Biles on top of the leaderboard again. Over to Vault for Simone Biles next in the third rotation of the night. And that lead once again, the margin has widened over five points now. Sky Blakely right there in second. Kayla DiCello rounding out the top three. Hasley Rivera, last year's U.S. junior all-around champ ahead of Suni Lee. Top two, by the way, guaranteed spots at the Olympic trials. I think as many as 12 to trial. So we'll see. Rotation three straight ahead. The 2024 Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Round out your protection with life, phone, and pet health insurance. Skyline here in Fort Worth, Dallas Metroplex. Second time we've had the championships right here inside Dickey's Arena. Gymnastics stars all around watching. Jordan Weaver, Kyla Ross, part of that gold medal winning Fierce Five team at the London Olympic Games and another star standing by with Zora right now. Yeah, 2004 Olympic gold medalist Carly Patterson is in the building. Everybody's here. A, a, a piece of history before we get to you, Carly. At the time that you won your Olympic all around, the U.S. had not won at that event in over 20 years. When you come back to the sport and an event like this, what memories come back to your mind? Oh my gosh, it, it always brings me right back to be here on the floor watching these girls. It kind of gives you those same nerves and you just remember that exact moment and feeling. And so it definitely, it brings back all the memories and just excitement of being here, especially at U.S. Championships at, you know, an Olympic year. You've been watching everybody. Who's impressed you today? Oh, gosh, that's a hard question. I mean, so many of them. But what I'm seeing and what is really impressing me is the focus and the determination and the confidence that I'm seeing. And you need that. Going into the Olympics, we're so close. Like, you need to be on your game at this point. And every single great routine you do, every salute you do, counts and matters and you want to get that confidence under your belt and so I feel like I'm seeing a lot of confidence in the girls which I love to see and so just cheering them on on that. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. So thank you. So we go over to Uneven Bars with Sky Blakely who is coached by Evgeny Marchenko who coached Carly Patterson. There you go. I had a chance to ask Carly what makes Evgeny such a great coach and she said his calming effect. She he would always put his hands on her shoulders and remind her you can do this because it's the moment right there before you go that you need every ounce of confidence, not only from yourself, but from everything around you. Nice opening skill. Far away from the bar, you see that leg separation, but she saves it. pulls it back on. It's really important to continue the momentum and rhythm in a bar routine. And nailed it. Nailed and the landing for sure. Came in second last year in this individual apparatus event, which takes place as well here at the National Championships. That means not only what a night, 
what a week she's had. Yeah, she's she's doing so well, and it's moments like that where there is a mistake and she's still able to make it work that's really going to stand out to the selection committee. Okay. Hopefully Suni Lee did not watch anybody else on balance beam tonight. There have been mistakes there. She's getting ready to go. This is a big routine for her, you guys. We talked about her uneven bars, but balance beam as well. Those are the two events that can put her on the Olympic team. We saw her bars absolutely lights out right here. This would be another big statement for her in her comeback. And she has the most amount of difficulty in the competition on beam from night one. About three tenths higher than Simone Biles. She did have a couple wobbles, though, from night one. So really an area she can improve here. That was nice. You want to get above 180 degrees on your leaps. And connecting skills together gets bonus points to help your difficulty. That's why hers is so high. Slight adjustment, but moving through it to minimize that deduction. Really good from Suni Lee. You can see she's excited about that one. Huge improvement from night one, and again, putting that confidence in the bank. Don't want to overlook what she's come back from, too. Competing at Auburn and then time away from that because of the kidney illness, two different types, and had a doctor tell her. She listen in. At one point, you're not going to be able to compete anymore. Said it was heartbreaking and then starting to believe in treatment at the Mayo Clinic once a month and then once every three months now, getting the medication right, the stamina, the endurance, and then the last part is that belief. Yeah, and you see her coach, Jess Grabo, right there. He said, we only started training consistently since mid-January, so they're still putting in the numbers and still training. He said her body is fully there, but it's her mind that needs to know she is strong enough to do all these skills again. And I don't want to overstate how big that beam routine was, you guys. If she keeps doing that through the trials, the selection committee wants that. They will beg yeah. for that routine on their Olympic team. If she can add some difficulty to her bars and hit, I don't see how they keep her off of it. Number for Sky Blakely, uneven bars, 14-4-5. Green, you want to be in, obviously. That yellow caution, you don't want to be in red. She's been in green. Yeah, that's really good, and she's really showing that consistency that she was hoping to. All right, Jordan Childs in seventh after the second rotation. A moment ago on vault here in rotation three. She's really clean, typically gets a high execution score. That's really what it looks like every single time she goes hop back, so that's going to be a deduction. But overall, that's why you're seeing a 9-4 execution. Yep, 14 for the overall number. Jordan Childs still to come on vault. Simone Biles here as she has led throughout the national championships. That next step on the road to Paris, the Olympic team trials, and it's in Minneapolis this time around. Come your way June 27th, the men, 20 men have been named. Brody Malone, by the way, congrats. Three-time U.S. All-Around champ with the win this week, and then the women will find out. That'll be announced later. Suni Lee after a solid routine on a beam, John. Yeah, you hear Sam talk about it throughout the routine and how you need to have a 180-degree split on your leaps like this one right here let's let's grade suny lee real quick <laughs> look at that above 180 and, and sam was kind to remind me that you really want to go above 180 so the judges don't have any doubt in their mind suny lee right there putting on a clinic how about that number well that's why she got such a high score it's one tenth higher than simone biles highest score on beam of the evening 
over to floor exercise and you're looking at the reigning Olympic gold medalist in this event, Jade Carey. And guys, this is where she needs to start to shine. This is a huge routine for her quest for another Olympic team spot. Yeah, I thought she got a little, I thought the judges were a little tough on her score on night one, but she could clean up her landings and she already did it on her first pass. Jade also reminded me that this floor routine is not at full strength. She has more difficulty add to add in the next two passes. So it's actually just a simpler routine to gain confidence going into the Olympic trials. Across the board, all four tumbling passes were much cleaner in execution on the landing. So we should see a higher score for her on floor. Nominate Grandma up there watching. She continues to add difficulty to that floor exercise routine. And she says, yeah, I do feel the pressure every time now as the reigning Olympic champ to be the best on floor. Yeah, something that I really respect about Jade Carey, Suni Lee, and their coaches, they're a little bit older in the competition. They're pacing them well, well, which we really haven't seen in this sport for the past few quads. So entertaining that, I think it's gonna keep their bodies healthy and keep them in the game for longer. And on the right, we'll get that number in a moment. Over to uneven bars, Kayla DiCello in third, heading into this third rotation of the night. She's tied for second on this event after night one. Before she mounts the bar, she thinks through every single one of her skills for visualization. Really helps her. Oh. Oh, oh man. Falling is never fun. It, usually it looks more painful. Oh, really? Than, well, usually it looks more painful than, than actually it is it's more frustrating because imagine riding a bike and having to stop at a stop sign. Starting that momentum again is really tough. Yeah. That's what it's like on the uneven bars when you have to restart your routine in the middle. I'll tell you this, it sounded painful. She's catching close and you see right there, broke that connection. The flow and the momentum on a bar routine is just so important. She's been having such a good weekend. That is really disappointing. She was on a roll yeah, that throughout was, the week. That was her first major mistake. And I just want to put this in the picture of the Olympic team. Again, the stock for Suni Lee just goes up because Kayla DiCello has a mistake on bars. Before that point, she had a solid bar performance night one, but now a little question mark. It's a roller coaster. You're wearing me out, John. Yeah, usually when you're really nervous, you let go earlier to make sure you get on the bar, but she was so close to the bar that she couldn't hang on and continue that swing. That's really what happened here as well. Look, she's close to the bar, yeah. hits her forearms. It's tough. You want to be perfect distance away from the bar to continue the momentum with your swing. Tough to do. You don't notice it when well, it goes well, Terry. I mean, it's it's one moment in time, too, right? That yeah. is just one moment that can ruin your routine and your night. All right, over to vault. And here's one of those moments that everybody's got the camera out for, their phone, Simone Biles, vault. Yurchenko, double pike. Oh, hang on. Man. So this is actually interesting because she did this exact same thing at event finals at World Championships. She lost the gold medal 
because Laurent Landy was standing on the podium and had to incur a deduction. She would have won if she did this exact vault without Laurent there. That's why she's doing it without the coach standing on the podium. Just too much power on that. Yeah, she overshot it. And a lot of people might ask, how could she still win with a fall? Well, it's so much difficulty. Eight tenths more difficult than any other vault in the competition. Just held on to those legs a little long. She's got to open up for that landing a little bit more. But uh, not going to yeah. hurt. Not going to hurt the standings, I don't think. Yeah, the air awareness wasn't quite there. Sometimes I'm not mad. Is that what she just mouthed? <laughs> I think she did say that. <laughs> it's a good mistake in the grand scheme of mistakes. It's a safer mistake to make versus under rotating it, which could hurt her ankles. I'm dead watching. You think of that journey. Wow. What they have been through what she has been through the experience in Tokyo and now back wondered if she would decide to go and make a run for the Olympics in Paris and overall I mean look at as good as ever second vault okay and that's a Chung vault same vault that Sky Blakely did Jade Carey does but Sam, she makes it look so easy. She does. She's such a quick twitched athlete that it's almost hard to count the amount of times that she rotates in the air because that's how fast it is. Guys, that first vault she did, by the way, yeah. you know, she got a 15. No one else in the competition got closer than half a point. By the way, just to remind people, you do two vaults if you want to try to win the vault individual title. Yeah, her block off the table is truly incredible. And if you're wondering what a block is, just put your arms above your head and do a shoulder shrug. That's basically what they're doing, except upside down. I'm trying right now. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not succeeding, though. We'll work on it, Terry. OK, you got it. All right, there is that number, though. I mean, 60 plus on the opening night, which was a goal for her for the four rotations on night one, really meaningful for her she topped the 60 mark the best number we've seen in the olympic quad this time around parents loving it back with a reminder friday july 26 the olympic games return live from paris on nbc and peacock you can be there yeah I hope so. Me too. <laughs> Number of people in this, this arena trying to get there, trying to make the team eventually after the Olympic trials. Arc de Triomphe, brilliant setting there. The opening ceremony along the Seine. Cecile and Laurent Landy, Simone Biles coaches. Congratulations to them. Their daughter, Juliette, just last week named to France's Olympic diving team in Paris. Synchronized springboard she'll be competing in. That's pretty cool. That's incredible. Talk about an athletic family. I know, right? And leading the way once again with Simone Biles to the Olympics, those two. All right, the number 13-7 for Jade Carey. Lower than expected, floor? You know, she doesn't have her full strength in, but I think this goes to show that she has to continue to upgrade. And they know that. They're pacing her well and taking it one step at a time. OK, 13-6 on the opening night, so a little bit better than the first night. Well, at 2022 Worlds, she had a 6.1 difficulty. That's the D score. So I think we can expect Jade's score to increase by a few tenths at Olympic trials. Kayla DiCello, 12-6 on even bars. Had that fall, remember. So the, the first real significant mistake of the night and the week. All right, Jocelyn Robertson in eighth place after the second rotation. Teenager from Texarkana, Texas. A few moments ago, over on vault. This is one of her best events. She's such a powerful athlete. But it's also the event that she incurred an injury at World Championships last year. Working on getting it all the way around. That's the same vault that Simone Biles does for her second vault. 
She's got a lot of power. I just want to see her clean up that landing. That's where we're seeing the deductions come in the execution score. Of course, the execution is out of a 10.0. So all of you that are missing the perfect 10 in gymnastics, it's still, there. it's still there, just in the execution score. She's committed to the University of Arkansas this fall. All right, the 15-year-old from New Jersey, Hesley Rivera, who's had an outstanding night a moment ago on uneven bars. This is a really good event for her. She has so much difficulty for one of the younger athletes in the competition. Really nice swing from high to low. Perfect body positions on those handstands. These are all the things that the judges are looking for with that execution score. Really nicely done. I mean, she is having a weekend. The night continues. Wow. And mom and dad. Heidi and Henry, he's really expressive. He, I mean, he's, <laughs> and, and he's got some hops. I've seen him jump up <laughs> in the stands, as a matter of fact. A brother, sister, also in attendance watching. And fifth in the all over. I mean, she is having some week. Yeah, not quite as high of a score as she got on night one, but still a really good score for her. And it's going to help her in the all around as well. Top five. All right, moment ago, Leanne Wong looking to make a move in 10th place after the second rotation on floor exercise. This was a really good event for her on night one. She changed her routine construction and actually added in a fourth pass coming into this weekend. Open double double. You see the yellow flag again. We're having an out of bounds issue across the board here in this competition. Leanne is so beautiful to watch. She has such a classic style on this event. Her posture and presentation, those all go into the artistry category that the judges are looking for. two for two on a really good floor team. On a pre-med track at the University of Florida 4.0 GPA in the spring. Also an entrepreneur. She's had the boutique, right? The handmade bows yeah. since 2021. So many people want to know how she juggles it all, but she told me that she actually does better when she has school in addition to her gymnastic schedule. Keep you focused. Yeah. yeah. So 13-6 the number. Uh, Simone Biles atop the leaderboard again throughout night one, night two, extending the lead. One last rotation here at the Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Simone Biles, that lead is up to 5.7 points, looking for a ninth U.S. all-around title. Sky Blakely, Kayla DiCello rounding out the top three, but you're looking at the gymnast who many consider the greatest of all time. Seven Olympic medals for them gold, record 30 world medals, eight U.S. all-around titles, five different skills named after her in many ways. Watching her the first two nights here in Fort Worth, better than ever, at least as good. It looks like she's on the road to being as good as she ever was. But that experience with the twisties in Tokyo, which took her out much of the Olympics last time around, I think a lot of people wonder, is that something that lingers? You still have to 
challenge yourself to get over a hurdle like that. Yeah, and I'm sure it still is in the back of her mind, but they've been very vocal about the training she's done outside of the gym, and she's been doing just as much mental training as she's been doing physical training. She's been doing therapy outside of practice that she said has been really beneficial, and her overall belief and confidence in herself and the way that she's able to compete so calmly, we're seeing it here tonight. John, what's your take on that? Yeah, you know, when this happens to Simone in Tokyo, it was a little frustrating for those in the gymnastics world because those outside the gymnastics world have never heard of the twisties. They criticized her and, and they just didn't know what they were talking about. When you get the twisties, the first thing you have to do is you have to stop what you're doing. You have to back up to the very beginning. You have to do basics. You have to quiet your mind and get right. And it's kind of the equivalent of a batter that can't hit the ball. You know, when you can't hit the ball, you go back to the very beginning. You put the ball on a tee, you hit it off the tee. Then you get the pitching machine, and then you work your way back up. You guys would not believe the Olympians and the Olympic champions that came out of the woodwork after Tokyo telling me you would not believe what I had to deal with with the twisties. It's not as uncommon as you might think. And going back to the basics, she didn't have time to do that in Tokyo. Yeah, I've had the twisties, and you really have to take it back to the basics and relearn a skill. But after talking to Simone, she said that she's in better shape both mentally and physically and that she's found better ways to manage the pressure. So I think that that's why she's looking so calm and comfortable on the competition floor, even despite what happened in Tokyo. Both nights to open up, it looked like she couldn't wait to get out there and compete. Not only confident, but excited, happy to be back here and competing at the national level and eventually the Olympics. One more rotation left here in Fort Worth. Back to tell you, it's time to get ready for the thrill of the summer. Your favorite ninjas are back, taking the competition to new heights. American Ninja Warrior coming your way tomorrow on NBC and Peacock. Windy night in Fort Worth, Dickies Arena and National Championships. John Roethlisberger, how about what we saw last night from Brody Malone? Dominant performance this week. America needs to know about this young man because less than a year and a half ago, he laid on a high bar mat with his knee mangled with the idea that he may never do gymnastics again. But did he do gymnastics again? Yes, he did. And he dominated the U.S. championships here in Fort Worth. He's a national champion again. And look out world because he's going to go to Paris most likely Got to get through trials and win some medals. Absolutely unbelievable. You know, when Brody Malone swims in the ocean, the lifeguards blow the whistle for the sharks to get out of the water because this kid is tough and he's going to be fun to watch here heading into Paris. Hey, John, it's not just him, too. It's the team. They won a bronze medal at the World Championships, first one since 2014. Brody didn't show any emotion. His father <laughs> did at the end of that night. Couldn't even watch. It was pretty special. Uh, that was impressive. But Frederick Richard, sensational. He's come on strong. Coy Young, a young star. You know, Moldauer, who's a veteran. Wiskus. So eventually, there are 20 guys who are going to the Olympic trials. They named those. And um, you've got five spots. It won't be easy on that side. On the men's side, picking a five-person team for the Olympics either. All right. The last rotation of the night here. Night two for the women. And... A key vault coming up for Jade Carey. And she says it's all about the run for her. So you might think that they need to run as fast as they possibly can going into a difficult vault, but it's all about the control. How fast can you go and still have control into the vault? We saw Jocelyn Robertson and Sky Blakely do the same vault. Can Jade Carey do it better? If she wants to be on the Olympic team, she almost has to. She taps into her power on the round off. Great landing. Talk about Simone's experience in Tokyo, that of Suni Lee, the all around champ, the floor champ, Jade Carey, but she was one of the contenders for gold, had a misstep in that vault. And Big disappointment for coming back to win in floor. Yeah, we're seeing the big vault, little leg separation in the air, but you see how her chest is vertical when her feet hit the ground. So you always want to look at the chest position when an athlete's feet hit the mat. That's what the judges are looking for. 
to see what deductions to take, and that's going to be a really good score. Now you're telling me I not only have to land it, I've got to stand up straight? Yeah, I mean, it's tough to do. There's so many things to think about. So her feet land right here. And really, you want to see it vertical. Now she finesses it a little bit and gets it up pretty quickly, but that's the goal, is to get your chest completely vertical when your feet hit the ground. And the number 14.6 for that vault. So the first one's what's part of the all around and if you want to be in consideration for that vault title you do two each night and that vault by the way better than both jocelyn robertson and sky blakely did it earlier in the competition yeah her landing was so clean this is a yurchenko double full another minimal deducted landing position she does that so well and it looks easy for her. She said she's hoping to bring an upgrade, and that would really help her score significantly. Jade Carey just did herself a favor right there, guys. That was a big yeah. vault for her, much improved, as Sam, you kind of alluded to, over the last year or so, and, and that was much needed for her quest. Yeah, nice block. Remember, the block is when her arms hit the table, and she's shoulder shrugging really dynamically off the table. That's what helps get her power. And the vault is just so fast. It's such a quick thing, but every minute detail matters to the success of a vault, which is what makes it so difficult. How much do you go back and watch the video of what you did as a gymnast? So much. They're watching video in practice to break down every small little angle because the shapes of your body mean everything in a sport like gymnastics. See those hugs compete against other gymnasts here, obviously, but eventually part of a team, too. And I think that's the experience of many of these athletes having gone to college now to come yeah. back to elite, and they've had that experience of being a part of a team. Yes. Speaking of college, this is her Oregon State head coach, Tanya Chaplin. Thank you. So Leanne Wong in 10th after Three rotations, she'll finish up on vault as well. Think big picture with me here. Obviously, Simone's been impressive. Sky Blakely has done herself a lot of good in the two nights. Kayla DiCello as well at this point. Yeah, she looks good. But Leanne Wong, the thing that she has going for her is being able to do her skills no matter what. She gets thrown into competition and usually has a positive result. Something's happening on vault where these are textbook. They look really good here. All right, top 10 going into that rotation. Leanne Wong, the effort on vault as we continue with the final rotation of the night here in Fort Worth, Texas. Back with the number on vault for Leanne Wong, 14-2-5. So that a few moments ago. But one of the big stories, I think, not only tonight, but opening night plus this, Hesley Rivera, the 15-year-old who moved from the junior level to the senior level now in elite gymnastics. I mean, look, at she's top five. Yeah, I think everyone inside the gymnastics world was so excited for her to become a senior to see how she stacks up against these incredible athletes. Okay. She's doing a good job. All right, on the right, we, we told you about her parents and her dad who can barely watch. Remember, he was celebrating a <laughs> short time ago. This is what he did throughout this beam routine. <laughs> and a lot of parents can relate. Side aerial to get things going for Hesley on beam. And you can see her high releve on that high toe position. That is really beautiful. Excruciating. Beautiful, but excruciating for him. Little slow on that connection, but if it was up to me, I would still honor that connection right into the back handspring swing down. Of course, you never want to leave it open for question whether the judges are or are not going to give you a connection.
one of my rules for beam is finding your arms, and she's doing such a good job. That means in all of your skills, your arms are in the correct places to help you land perfectly solid on beam. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, then the celebration. John, is that what you look like at a Little League game? <laughs> exactly. If my kid's pitching, I'm hiding my eyes. Oh, my gosh, that was fun to watch, but also makes you nervous. Does he have sweat marks under his air armpits that I'm seeing there? It's nerve-wracking watching. I'm nervous, and I'm not related to her. <laughs> I used to watch my sister compete, and even as a brother, it's, it's brutal. It's tough. 14.1 the number on balance beam. The good night continues for Hesley Rivera. Yeah, that puts her in third place on balance beam so far with the combined two scores from night one and night two. Really impressive stuff. And Simone Biles in first by far. 5.7 points the lead going into the final rotation going to finish up on uneven bars. How much is that? Five points. I'll, I'll tell you what that is. That's entering the fourth quarter of a football game up 35 points yeah. is what she is looking at right now. Five points, a one point for a fall. So in theory, she could fall five times. I was going to say, it's like everybody in the competition has fallen five times already. Massive dis difference for her. So she's just got to get through this bar routine. Very little pressure on her, but always a good opportunity. Smooth release moves. She has such an efficient bar routine, really minimizing those handstands, potential deductions. Two steps on the dismount, but man, she looks good this weekend. There's this joy I noticed from her when she starts and ends her routine that I haven't seen in a long time. Cecile talked about that, and you mentioned it. It's not just the skills. It's the enjoyment right now. The attitude. Yeah, people ask, can she handle the pressure? It really doesn't look like she has a weight on her shoulders like we've seen from her maybe in past competitions or that past quad. So that's what I like noticing from her. And you could see that mental work she's doing outside of the gym have a really positive effect on her gymnastics. Here's that blindfold into a double double. That's an upgrade she brought back this year increasing her start value, that D score. <laughs> Jonathan able to watch and celebrate eventually. And you know, this event wasn't always her best, but she was in first place on bars after day one. That's a big accomplishment for her. She's told us that time, I sometimes dread. Good. There's anxiety <laughs> there for bars. Couldn't tell this week. But no one else knows the pressure she's under every time she comes to competition. It's unlike anybody else. Yeah, and it's usually pressure you put on yourself as well. So she talks about how she's been managing the pressure a lot better this time around and, and really building those tools in her toolbox for key moments like the Olympic Games. You talk about building, Sam, too. You know, you look at the score from night one as we wait for the, the bar score here. Two points higher about than she scored at the World Championships when she won the all-around. So <laughs> the build continues. By the way, why can her coach be out there for that and not for the vault? Uh, that's the big question. I think it's going to change. The rule is going to change. And what we're referring to is a coach can stand there on uneven bars, release moves, zero deductions. But there's our coach, Laurent Landy. But on vault, if he stands there, that's a point five deduction, half of a point deduction yeah. for him just standing there. Doesn't make so much sense, does it? No one in the gymnastics world appreciates that very much. All right, so we wait for that number for Simone Biles, but while we do a key routine in this final rotation for Sky Blakely over on balance beam. Yeah, absolutely, guys. You know, she's capable of putting up one of the highest, if not the highest start value on this event. But as Sam will tell you, as much as she could win a world gold medal or even an Olympic gold medal on this event, the, the most important part she's missing is consistency in those big pressure spots on this event 
is where she has had mistakes in the past. But if she can put it together, wow, look out Olympic team. Here comes Sky Blakely. So there is that number 14-4 on uneven bars, a little lower than opening night, but still very good for Simone Biles. Now I'm excited to watch Sky's beam routine because she's sitting pretty in that second place all around. All she needs to do is hit this routine. It would, one, secure her in that second place spot and add a lot of stock to the selection committee that she can hit in critical moments. But you want to hope that she's not thinking about any of those things right now. She gets all of her connections. Her difficulty is a 6-6. Six, six. <laughs> Standing tuck full. <laughs> so it's not going to be a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, difficulty score because she did not add that connection, but no one would really know that except me and her. John knew it. Thanks, Jerry. My point being is that it's not a deduction <laughs> that she's Understood. not doing those skills, but it's not quite as high as it could be. She looks nervous, but what I like is that she's handling the nerves. She's visibly breathing on the beam. Smile. And she makes it. We'll step there at the end on the dismount, but she's put together a national championship here, trying to secure that second spot. Remember, might be a formality. She's going to go to trials, but the top two automatically have spots at the Olympic trials. Yeah, you see that big, deep breath after she finished. That's a big moment, guys, not going to lie. But, but Tim, we talked about what she needs to do on beam. She can't just do it twice or even three times. She's got to really hit that beam routine four times to mm -hmm. get that cred pack on that event. But huge hurdle for her. And if anybody has raised their stock this week, it I don't think anybody's done it more than Sky Blake. No doubt about it. Jordan Childs now a share of six going into the final rotation on bars. She was tied for second on this event after day one. It's a good event for her. She is so clean, legs glued together. Really dynamic swing. Good distance away from the bar. Easy combination. And what you notice is really perfection in her handstands. There's more of an emphasis on those cast handstands in the collegiate world. So she's had a lot of practice there. Beautiful. That's how she wanted to end the meet. Take it all in, look up to the crowd, applaud them. Yes. I think a lot of people were nervous about Jordan Childs coming in. There comes Simone. <laughs> So we wait for the number there, but the night is over for Jordan Childs, the fourth rotation here. And a moment ago, Kayla DiCello, another one very much in the mix for that Olympic team on balance beam here. If she hits this beam routine, that is going to be huge for her. She hasn't had a perfect weekend, but John always likes to talk about increasing stock, and she can help herself out right here. Triple series. Mm. She didn't push hard enough in that back leg going to through that last flip.
She's bringing it back. A little off balance, quick adjustment. You can see her eyes are glued to the end of the beam. If you're a little shaky, that's a great way to keep balance. New dismount, it's a round off two and a half. She hasn't had any problems with this the entire year. And another solid one here tonight. And the number just over 13, third place. So it's in third, going into that final rotation. And in third, Sky Blakely. What a week it's been for her. There's the number, and she is in second place right behind Simone Biles. Yeah, she had one heck of a weekend. She is so such a joy to speak to. You can tell her heart and soul is just really in her training. Her coaches speak volumes about her positive work ethic. So 14-5, and you see into fourth place for Jordan Childs. That bar team big, you guys, and I think for Jordan, she has some mistakes. It's always to the last tenth of everything. I stay focused. But love you guys. She had some mistakes, but she had some high points that were really high, you guys, that I really think offset those mistakes she did have. That bar team being one of them. Sam, how about where she stands? We still got the trials, but going into trials now. Yeah, it's tough to say because you don't want to be at your best right now. So she had a lot of positive steps in the right direction. So I think she's going to be in a really good place come trials in a few weeks. All right, last on floor exercise is Suni Lee. Opened up with a struggle on vault, came back after that though, and this is her final rotation now. Great opening tumbling pass, no deductions on the landing. liked about Suni's overall performance today is that she had a significant mistake on vault and came back strong on the other events. It did not turn into multiple mistakes. She didn't give up and that shows the selection committee a lot. And, and that's a concern right now getting that confidence back coming back from the illness and to open up with a mistake that could rattle some people. Absolutely and I, I think it's positive in that way. So Suni Lee, the last to go on floor exercise here on night two as we wrap things up. But there is now the nine time U.S. all around champ. Look at that lead for Simone Biles. The 2024 Xfinity U.S. Gymnastics Championships is brought to you by Core hydration, whatever wellness journey you're on, you have to start somewhere. Start at the core by Nike. Introducing the Nike Air Max DN featuring dynamic air. The next generation of air technology is here. Air Max DN, feel the unreal. By Prevagen. 
and by Xfinity. Stream sports from the best seats in the house with Xfinity because it's only live once. So the night is over. The national championship settled. It is Simone Bile with her ninth all around title, almost six points. Sky Blakely, great week for her. Kayla DiCello and Suni Lee with 13 3 5 on floor at the end, moves up to fourth. Her goal was a top five, and she's right there as we send it over to Zora. Simone, Terry just said your ninth U.S. championship title. I just want to take a moment for that. Incredible stuff. I'm sure each win has its own story. What's a summary of what this one means? Yeah, today it's just getting out here, getting comfortable and confident in my gymnastics and hopefully going to Olympic trials and making that next step towards Paris. So I couldn't be more proud of how I'm doing this time in the year and just gaining that confidence over and over, getting myself back in front of a crowd and just doing what I do in practice. Your facial expressions are priceless. <laughs> Uh, how have you learned to move on to the next skill and routine after something happens? Well, I'm kind of a veteran. It's not my first time out there. I'm a little bit older, so I know exactly how to um, kind of reboot and recollect myself to move on to the next event. Even if I feel like something wasn't how I wanted it to go, I know exactly how to switch my mindset and keep going. And I think it's years of therapy. Um, Cecile and Laurent are amazing as well as having good uh, teammates. You talked about confidence, but are you having fun with your gymnastics right now? Yeah, everyone says I, I look like I'm having fun, so that's good because I feel like most of the time if I'm not stressing or have anxiety, I do feel like I'm having fun. So it's good to have that and feel that again. Thank you. You're welcome. Terry. Having fun watching, I'll tell you that. Winning your ninth U.S. All-Around title. Check out tonight's best seat in the house highlight presented by Xfinity. Your thoughts on what you saw from her. She just looks at ease across the board. She looks strong, she looks healthy, she looks fit, and she looks better than ever. Xfinity keeps gymnastics fans in the zone with a connection you can rely on. Stream sports from the best seat in the house with Xfinity because it's only live once. So that does it for the national championships. And you've got the all around title going to Simone Biles. Um, she did OK in the individual apparatus events, too, I think. Let's check those out. Uh, yeah, Simone Biles, Simone Biles, Simone Clean Biles. Simone Biles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why Jordan Childs was upset. She thought she got close, she right? She said, like, I almost had you. Yeah. That inner gym rivalry. rivalry. Someone's got to contend with Simone. Come on. Wow, what a performance. The sweep for Simone Biles. So that does it for this women's competition and the national championships. A reminder, the U.S. Olympic gymnastics team trials going to be held June 27th through the 30th in Minneapolis. You can catch all four days of the competition on NBC Peacock USA Network, and you can watch all the routines at USA Gymnastics YouTube channel right after the broadcast. For our entire NBC Sports crew, I'm Terry Gannon saying hope you enjoyed it, and goodbye from Fort Worth.